I'm with Steve Martin, who is the co-author of Yes, 50 Scientifically Proven Ways to Be Persuasive. Steve, um, if I'm a CEO waking up on the first morning of 2013, uh, what, should I, what should I be thinking about? How can I improve my organisation or me as an individual when it comes to getting people to see my point of view? Uh, I think what you're talking about, Palmina, is how could a CEO be more influential? And I think the first thing they can do is recognise that influence isn't just an art. There's a science, there's about 60 years of evidence that shows how we can effectively move people in entirely ethical, responsible and sustainable ways. So my advice would be to learn the science. Tell me, how, give us briefly uh, an explanation of how you got people to use their towels more frequently um, within hotels. Yeah, well this speaks to one of the principles of influence, the principle of consensus or social proof. The idea that people follow the lead of what others around them are doing. So when we placed signs, and my, my colleagues Robert Cialdini and Noah Goldstein who led the studies, uh, placed signs in hotel bathrooms saying that 75% of previous guests had reused their towels, they registered a 26% increase in recycling, which was much more effective than threatening people or coercing or educating them or telling them about the merits of environmental protection. So that simple insight from consensus led to a significant increase. And as an individual, I mean, what, what can I do to start thinking about the way my organisation uh, can respond to these types of signals or what sort of um, practices can I put in place to help my organisation think like that? Well, uh, if we talk more about consensus, it's the understanding that you don't have to use your own ability to influence and persuade. You can use what many others are doing that's desirable. So shining a light on uh, good practices um, and making them the norm in an organisation is going to be an important thing. Of course, this is just one of the principles. There are five others that uh, also you can rely on to be a more effective influencer and communicator. And I also mm. gather that you've been working with the uh, UK's uh, tax and revenue, uh, the uh, HMRC tax and revenue organisation. Uh, how have you managed to increase uh, the return of uh, annual tax returns with uh, that organisation? Yeah, this is the, so. This is an interesting one. It's it, it came about after the TAL studies. They they asked simply the question: What's the most effective message on a letter that encourages people to submit tax returns on time? And you know, the typical approach is to you know, either threaten or offer in a disincentive or an incentive. So what we did was we replaced letters that typically threatened or, or fined people for not submitting their tax returns and replaced them with messages that said, this is the honest number of people in the UK who do pay their taxes on time, the overwhelming majority in fact. And what we found is actually by um, targeting those messages and not just saying, look, here's the number of people in the UK, but here's the number of people who share your postcode or zip code and the number of people in your town that pay, that similar others approach led to significant improvements in return rates, leading to the collection of hundreds of millions of additional pounds. So these aren't small effects. These, they may be small changes, but they have you know, often huge effects in terms of their impact. And why do you think that mm. that's more successful? than a financial penalty. There is a £100 immediate penalty if you don't return your uh, tax return on time. Why is it that uh, a, a financial penalty isn't as uh, effective, or rather you can go over and above that? Yeah, well, let me first say that I'm not suggesting that financial penalties aren't effective uh, in certain contexts. They certainly are. Um, but the problem in this information overloaded changing world is is that we need other tools we need other approaches and so you know we can incentivize we can penalize we can legislate but i think the one thing that we are less reliant on are these principles of influence that are often costless to employ um, hence i think they have a huge utility you know whether you're a a, 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 a manager in an organization or the chief exec uh, i think there's a case to be made that every single person in an organisation should avail themselves of this skill to influence more effectively by using the science. And that these messages that you've used to encourage people to behave in a particular way, um, they need to be reinforced. I mean, presumably, and we've all done this, we've gone to hotels, seen the sign, maybe initially have said, oh, okay, I, I will reuse my towel. But actually, when I go the next time, I then become, or it becomes rather anonymous, or it becomes invisible to me. Yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. So first things first, you know, any behavior change or influence strategy needs to be reinforced. And I'm aware we've only spoken about one of the principles. There are five others. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole toolkit 
that uh, managers and executives can actually use, not just consensus, but you know the principles of reciprocation, scarcity, authority, commitment and liking too. So um, there's no end of tools and levers that we can apply ethically to sustain those changes over time. Great. Steve Marsden, thank you very much. Welcome.